Okay, now we're ready to paint this guy. This is my basic setup. So I just got a, a metal clipboard and I um, got a neodymium magnet just glued to the bottom of a, of a uh, pill bottle. Another one here. These I use for my, uh, just the big one is to wash out my brush. And the little one is to just dip my brush in to wet it now and then. Don't need to wash it out sometimes, but just to wet it. So these stick here, so I don't have to worry about knocking them over because <laughs> I will do that. <clears throat> and the paints is this acrylic wash. Now I've been painting with uh, acrylics for like about 40 years and, uh, and oils. And I started painting with gouache about four or five years ago. Really like gouache. And then I discovered this stuff, acrylic gouache. It's halfway between acrylic and gouache. So I was able to use all my acrylic techniques but get the effect of gouache. So it's pretty cool. And the one good thing I like about this is the colors pretty much dry about the same colors they are. There's a little bit of change here and there, but basically they, there's not a big shift when the paint's dry. So I'm just going to start out with, let's see, a few colors here. Start with black and white and brown. That's all we need to start with. <clears throat> so So for most of this kind of rendering type stuff, I just use a round brush. And you know, everybody talks about getting these expensive brushes and I have them. I've got Escoda brushes and all different brands. But I found just the cheap stuff from Michaels works pretty darn good. And you can tell if it's a good brush or not by if you wet it and then go like that. If the tip stays together, which this does fairly good. This one too, wet it. Flick it, tip stays together, it's a pretty good brush. That's all we're gonna need. So I'll start out with the big brushes. I usually start with a bigger brush and work my way down, sort of like gears on a car. So, so we got this gray tone paper, which is good. So that's our middle tone. So we, do, we can go light into that and dark into it. So, but first we're gonna go dark into it. So let's start making these a little darker here. So, and the reason I have the brown here is one thing I found is if you keep your, in this case, the shadows are going to be warm shadows. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. So, just get this in here. So, this is just this cast shadow here. And let's see, we'll just wet this a little bit. Put some water, make it look a little more fluid here. This is just water I'm doing now with the paint that was already on the brush. So that's just gonna go off the page there. A little more paint here. All right, and then we have a little bit of shadow right in here. And right here. like right about in here some shadow off his foot here all right let's see just smooth this out just a little bit okay now we can start detailing the frog a little bit so this darker color I have mixed up here well uh Start putting that in. So you see this cast shadow here in his leg. And it looks like this is pretty dark right in here. 
So now the thing we're really working with right at this point is values. And um, this is where values become really critical here. So like how dark are we doing this? So that looks probably about right. So and there, let's see. The good thing about gouache is that it is opaque. So I don't have to worry too much about <clears throat> going over a spot, I can always uh, undo it, uh, or paint over it, I should say. And I can be as loose or tight as I want to be. So this looks like this grade eights back this way, this shadow. Let's see, it's in here. This is a shadow along his back here, so it's kind of a mid, mid tone. It's not too dark. It's like this here, and then of course there's all these little spots and <clears throat> little bumps on the frog. Some of this tone right in here, a little bit of shadow. So this is pretty white here. Okay, and then it looks like towards the back here it gets, starts getting a little darker, so let's make that. Darken that here. Darken this shadow here. Darken it as it's going. Oh yeah, and this eyeball is pretty much in mostly darkness, just a little bit of light on it. Okay, it looks like his, right around his eyeball is a little darker here. And you see, even though it's a pretty big brush, the tip is uh, fairly small. You can get pretty good detail with it. And once again, this is just a cheapy brush. <laughs> from Zhangchen, China. I think I got this one on Amazon, actually. Yeah. As you can see, he's already starting to take shape here. Start putting in some of these little bumps. So right now we're still just using the three colors, mainly black and white, and I'm just using a little bit of black, I mean a little bit of brown to warm it up a little bit. And another episode I'll talk about uh, color temperature. But right now all you need to know is we're doing warm shadows and cool highlights. And if you keep it consistent, that's what makes it pop. So, all right, so now I'm just going to go a little bit lighter and do a few more of these markings here. That's ah, too light. Let's see. Some of these little bandings and markings here. Doing it pretty loose because they're going to get tighter and tighter as we paint over this with the gouache. Okay, so we went in and we did basically the, um, another important thing you need, paper towels. So we did the darker color, so now we're going to go a little bit lighter. So, like I said, since we started with the gray paper, we are at a mid-tone already. So now, 
we can start going lighter. So these little feet here have a lighter color to them, definitely lighter than the paper underneath. Quiet, my parakeets uh, aren't making noise. So I'm still, I'm coming off of the same mixture. It's got a little bit of brown in it because if you notice, some of these light colors are fairly warm. So notice how, like right here, I had, I went a little too far with the dark. Now I can just hit it right over with the light and it goes, just covers it right up. This stuff dries really quick too, just like acrylic. So it dries within seconds probably. So this in here is kind of a mid-tone. Let's see. So it's like there's a little bit lighter right here. That right here, under his eyes, right here. I don't know what that is. Okay, so we're still doing the lights. Now you see it's starting to take shape. Some of these pencil lines you see underneath, they're starting to go away now. Starting to lose them, which is what we want to do. Okay, now I'm gonna go to a smaller brush. So go to this guy here, and then I'm gonna do the lighter lights. And so for them, I'm just gonna do white and none of the brown, cause that's gonna warm it up. I want it to be cool. And black and white are both cool colors. <laughs> so. That's too gray. Now we're gonna go a little lighter. There we go. Get that strong highlight right there. And then there's a really strong highlight right there where the light's catching his eye. And his hands here, his little feet, feet hands, I don't know what they are. Um, kind of dark. So you see the lighter light now. Now it's starting to look a little more 3D. So we're putting these cool highlights on here. So what happens with the cool highlight is it, it pulls it forward. The, so your eye now, since we've set this up, your eye is going to read the warmer colors as shadow or reflected light, and it's going to read the cooler colors as uh, direct light, where the light is hitting it directly. So. Uh, looks pretty good. Now, let's make those darks a little darker. Now that we have some stuff to compare it to, we've got some highlights and some shadows. Now we can go in with it like this right here is the darkest part of the whole thing. And that, this is probably just a little tiny bit lighter back in here. So that looks like it's, I would say I'd do it pure black, except that we want a little touch of brown. Let's just warm that up a little bit. There we go. And then this line in here is really dark too. Put in that and probably this little thing right here. Okay. 
Now that we have that established, we can see that these shadows here look washed out. They need to be quite a bit darker. So for that, we're gonna do the brown and the black together. All right, just a little bit of white. And uh, yep, that looks about right. Pretty hard line right there on his body going out. I shouldn't say his body. I don't know if it's a male or female. There is a way to tell. But I don't know my spade foots that well. This little guy or girl <laughs> um, has been coming around every year. I, I imagine, I, I suppose the same one. They say they can live for like 13 years. Uh, every monsoon, uh, once the thunder comes, and uh, like today is uh, it's the middle of July, and um, it's been raining quite a bit. Not at my house, unfortunately, but around Tucson. But we have gotten some rain, and it's enough to wake these guys up. And what's fascinating with them is they hibernate for like 10 months of the year. And the thing that wakes them up out of hibernation is low vibration from like thunder and raindrops hitting the ground. So, really interesting. So now I'm getting my brush a little more watery here for the edges here, because I want it to be a little more fluid. Let's see shadows go off the page here. A little more just water. All right. So now let's go back in here. So, see a lot of this is, it's adjustments. Like you put a, a tone down, then you put other tones, shadows and whatever, and then you see if it's too light, too dark, and you kind of go back and forth. I don't know of anybody that can totally nail it the first time and get exactly the right tone. I mean, maybe somebody can, I don't know. I can't anyway. So this is my workaround, and it's one that you can use. It works pretty good. So now you see already, without using any color at all, we're starting to get a sort of a 3D kind of effect here. And when we're done, this guy will like want to just pop right off the page here. So let's see, here's the other cast shadow here from his eyeball. And once again, this is the brown mixed with the black and white, so that it's warmer. So we got these warm shadows here. So right in here is what they call losing an edge. Like right here and right in here. I can't tell exactly where from this photo where the edge is, but it, it doesn't matter really because it'll just blend right into that shadow. So, can make these a little darker. Let's see, looks like this line right in here should be a little darker. Now, if I didn't have the brown in here, it would start fighting and it would not want to, your eye wouldn't know whether you want to go up or down, whether this is a highlight or a shadow. So keep in mind your color temperature. That's basically what that is. So I'm going to put a little bit of white in this and do some of these metal kind of little bumps here so kind of you see this pool here I sort of have a gradient from lighter to darker here so I can kind of 
have a reference point. Like I want to go a little darker. So here we go. Let's see, get some of this, some of these markings here. So yeah, so this little spade foot, I've been here like 13 years. I think he's been here, or she, has come out like every monsoon. One thing you can tell spade foots is that, um, you can't see it from this photo because his eye is big and round here, but the, you know what you call it, you know, like cat eyes have like that uh, angle to them. And most frogs, the angle is right here, but catch a spade foot, it's vertical. So that's one way you can tell them apart. So, all right, just catching some of this in here. Oh, and I apologize if the parakeets are a little loud, but I have them, they're outside and they're right next to my window. And I keep the window cracked so that they get some cool air from the house. So it's it's going to be like a hundred. It's going to be 104 today out there. It's probably that's probably what it is right now. So, and these guys are nocturnal. You never see them during during the daytime. These spadefoots. They only come out at night. You usually don't see them then either, just every once in a while I'll run into one of them on the patio or something. Let's see, I think his eyeball should be just a little bigger. His pupil, I should say. Make it just a little bigger here. starting to look looks pretty good I think we're about ready for some color now this one there's not really a lot of color to them it's mostly going to be some greens and yellows so let's see I do some yellow ochre and this light green color We'll do these two. So this this green is a really strong color, so I'm going to have to tone it down quite a bit because he is not nearly that green. But it looks like he's got a lot of that kind of yellow ochre color to it. So let's see if we mix that. So that with some green. That's not too far from it. How's that look? Uh, not bad. Maybe it's just a little too intense. We'll put some of this tone it back just a little bit with some of this uh, brown color that we had before. Yeah, that looks that looks about right for the some of those markings. And if you uh, paint a little lighter with this, these are very opaque. But but if you paint lightly, stop. No. We have to be quiet, I'm recording. You have to be quiet. I'm, make, I'm making an instructional video. You can listen if you want, but you gotta be quiet, okay? I'll be, I'll be done in a minute. Uh-huh, see, here's my camera right here. So I'm painting this frog. <laughs> what do you think? Well, my granddaughter just walked in. So let's see, so this is a little bit the darker green here. And uh, that looks about right. You know that 
frog kind of looks kind of silly. Okay, you gotta be quiet. Just it's stay. cute. It's a cute, ugly frog. <laughs> I wonder where that came from. Let's see, so. This looks about right for this color here. Might be just a little intense. Let's tone it down just a little bit. A little bit of gray. I always use gray to tone things down. So what is gray is just white and black. So yeah, that's a lot grayer. Yeah, this looks about right. So, like I said, this is fairly quiet. Fairly quiet. I wish my granddaughter's quiet. Um, about the right color, I think. So you see how opaque these are, even though this is a darker color, it's covering right over it, which you can use it to make some of these little highlights in here. Let's see, and this is what the right color for in here looks like. So as you notice, I'm not doing it all exactly the same color because the frog isn't all exactly the same color. Some areas where the light hits, it's a little lighter. Um, some areas in the shadow are a little darker, a little warmer, so a little bit different shades of the same kind of colors. So I'm putting in these, this is the highlights here. Some of these little bumps on this back. Black those in pretty quickly here. that just a little bit okay see this has got a little more brown in it down here and on his leg here a little browner some of that same colors right in here and it starts kind of going up into this looks like this is a little warmer in here too So as you see these colors here, I'm just kind of mixing back and forth as we go, because uh, they'll be in the real frog, there's little mixtures of all these colors, pretty much. Once you sort of find the, the base color like this, then you can sort of start mixing them up, just like nature does. So, so now see, here's a little bit of warmer, little bumps here, a little bit in here.
a, it's starting to take shape. Now it looks like the light is hitting it like right through here. So we're gonna wanna cool this down just a little bit and put some cooler highlights in there. So cool, white, white is a cool color. Always, whenever you add white to anything, it cools it down, always. So, see how this looks, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit too light, too intense. So I'm gonna tone this down just a little here. There we go. Maybe a little touch of green in this. Boy, this green is strong. I have to be real careful with it. Yeah, so these patches are in here. And his leg right here is that same color too. So you see I have these little sort of puddles of color here that I keep picking from. I can do that for a little while. To, this stuff dries fairly quick on your palette, so got to work pretty quick. Although if it starts drying too much and you have some colors that you've made that you want to hold on to, one thing you can do is get one of these little spray bottles and just give it a shot. It'll keep it wet for a little bit longer. So, moving some of these little highlights up into here. And let's do his eye. That's kind of a fun area. So his eye is sort of this, it's hazel. He's got hazel eyes like me. And then outside of them too, it's actually very similar color. Okay, I think we got a few more spots up in here. Let's put some where the light's catching it here. Just, of course, we're not going to put in every little bump here. Really, we're just kind of indicating it. And anytime you're painting from nature, it's there's always a certain amount of abstraction. You're always abstracting because you cannot paint everything there. For one thing, it's impossible. Second, it'll drive you crazy. And there's enough crazy artists around. So, I think that's looking pretty good for color. Now I think we need to, since I lost some of my darks because this paint is so opaque, um, when I put the lighter colors over, I might lost some of it. So now we're going to go back into it with some darks here. So a little bit of brown, black. So there's a few just really dark areas right in here. The shadows are. Yeah, see how just doing that starts pulling it back already. So 
Here, see when I put that in, it really pulled that crease back down in there. This is about the same, same color as this shadow here. So we'll darken this shadow a little bit here. Sounds like my chihuahua has something cornered out in the yard. There's some rock squirrels that have been, that have set up in the alley that kind of make forays into the yard. He's probably barking at them. Use my finger every once in a while to kind of blot things in. Especially kind of these irregular sort of shapes here. Kind of lighten them up. So we're just going in putting in these warm darks again ones that kind of got lost. And the advantage of using acrylic wash over gouache is, as you can see, um, as I painted these earlier layers here, um, it dries and when you paint over it, it will not lift up. If I was doing this with a, I couldn't do some of this with acrylic, with regular gouache because once I go in to layer it, like put a different color over this, um, it would just pick it right up or it would mix in with the paint and wouldn't be good. So basically I'm using a, more of an acrylic technique sort of with this gouache. So just going in, darkening some of these with this warm dark. guys and this is just about done here I think that's pretty much it. I could sit there and tweak it for another half hour if I want to, but I think that's pretty much captured it. Let's just put just a little bit more, make some of this uh, ochre with this burnt umber. Just gray it down just a little bit. Pretty much just about done. Maybe a few little highlights. There's a really bright little highlight right in here. Let's see, I'm gonna wash that brush good. All right, final few strokes. So there'll be a few little highlights. So right back in here. There's some right in here. So 
So the highlights are really what kind of give it that final little pop. Ooh, brush is a little too dry. Moisten that up a little bit. Okay, looks like the light's hitting right through here, so a few more highlights right in here. If you notice this white I'm using, it's got a little bit of uh, gray and green and stuff in it, which is fine for this right here. Just catching it where the light's hitting it there. Okay, now the final part here. I'm gonna go with just some pure white. And one of the reasons I put my white in a long, like I put blobs of these, but the white I usually put in a longer um, blob here because I can pick parts of it out that aren't contaminated with other colors. So. I dip in right here, pure white. So that's what we want for right here. So that's probably the lightest part of the whole thing right there, that little highlight in his eye. And then right around it here. So that makes that pop. And like his elbow here. Give that a little pop. So, once again, this really helps that 3D illusion. This is all an illusion. I mean, we're working on two dimensions here. We're doing something, convincing somebody that it's three-dimensional. So. And I think that's about it. I think we got him. One thing I don't like here is the this little toes got kind of lost here, so let's fix that. The cool thing about using this gray paper is you can come back to the uh, almost the color of the paper here and correct. So some correct right there. Put a little line along this to just help define that those cute little toes. like his chin needs to be a little lighter there. Right in here. A little lighter than the paper. Alright, I think we got it. So then I clean up might want to get rid of some of these. One thing I found, I use kneaded erasers always to erase. But I found with the gouache, the gouache has a nice matte finish. And if you erase into the gouache, like right now I'm just going on the paper. You don't want to get into the gouache with these kneaded erasers because it sort of ruins that matte finish and it makes it shiny. So, probably should have erased this first. There we go. So, got rid of all our little construction marks. And then, like, these edges are really kind of critical, so if we want, we can just touch them up. 
And like I said, since it's a gray paper, I can totally mimic that same gray color. So, go into the gray here. And define this a little bit better. So it looks like just black and white is a little too cool. So let me t put just a touch of brown in it. Yeah, that matches the paper better. So just fix these little edges here. I think this should go in a little bit. And it looks like his stomach's a little fatter than I made it. I need to fix that. And then, uh, it's right here, I can fix that angle. All right, let's make this, give him a little more belly here. And I think we're done. All right, so there's gouache. So let's see, the painting part of this, I'm seeing looks like it took about 45 minutes. The drawing took, what, 10 or 15? So it took looking at an hour to do this, and this is pretty quick. And so what did we do? What did we learn? We uh, learned that from a complex organic shape, if we were putting it into two-dimensional space, we're doing a painting of it, drawing, uh, put a rectangle around it, grid it off. Then you have some reference points, and it's much easier to draw it that way. We grid it off, draw it. Once you get your drawing in, start coming in with the gouache uh, and use this Strathmore mixed media paper. Midtone is great, that way you can just work positive and negative, work darker into the midtone and lighter out of the midtone. And after we did that, then we came in with some color, put some color to it, and then we put the, a little bit of black and white as the final touches. So, and that's it, all done. You know, when you get close to it, it's fairly loose. It's, there's a Jackson Pollock painting. Oh, it's an Impressionist painting right there. Um, then we get back. Nope, it's realism. So, colors we used. Simple palette. 